Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and what a glorious day it is today. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a tour of the plots today. So there's the three plots, my plot, uh, Debbie's plot and uh, Jenny's plot. And yeah, they're going pretty well. I'm pretty pleased. It's such a transformation since the last tour. You know, the last tour it was all, all the old overwintered veg was still in the ground. Um, and you know, I was pleased I left it in the ground because we've had some tremendous harvests. I mean, the the harvests in um, mid spring were basically the equivalent of the harvests that we had in peak summer uh, last year. So yeah, it's been fantastic. And that was actually one of my objectives um, from for this year was to do a little bit more last year to maximise harvest levels uh, in spring this year, and it's definitely paid off. Um, yeah, so you know the transition's almost complete now. I mean, most of the tomatoes are in, uh, all the uh, cucumbers are in inside. Uh, so really, there's very little outside that still needs to be planted from a summer perspective. Just um, just a few outdoor tomatoes, really, uh, and outdoor cucumbers still to go in. I probably planted the squash plants maybe a little bit too early, um, and they got a bit scorched under the fleece. Um, so I've taken the fleece off now. But yeah, I'll give you a quick uh, tour around and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So we're in the polytunnel on my plot now. Uh, and last tour, all of this was full of overwintered brassicas. Uh, so it's all transitioned over to uh, the tomatoes now. Uh, and I've still got the overwintering uh, brassicas down here underneath this trestle table. Uh, because they're full of um, cauliflowers and uh, broccolinis and things and it just seems a shame to take them out because, well, still really productive. So let's have a quick uh, look around here. So cucumbers are doing really nicely. I'm very pleased with those. We're going very strong uh, and I might even get the, uh, the strings in today. And then, yeah, the uh, celery. Look at that. Gosh, it's going really nicely. And they really good stalks on these now. Some... Um, you know, it won't be long now before we start uh, harvesting a bit of that celery. And these are my earliest beetroot, and these are starting to, uh, to um, the roots are starting to grow anyway on those. I'm not getting the language right. So this is one of my earliest uh, tomatoes. I've grown very few early tomatoes this year, um, just because it's hard to keep them going in this polytunnel. Um, you know, getting the balance right between being too hot for the overwintered stuff and too cold for the summer stuff but um, this one's done well and this is Ildi and look at the size of these trusses these are just phenomenal trusses and uh, yeah so hopefully that uh, Ildi does well and I've got another Ildi here again just look at these trusses look at this one down here look at that <laughs> look at that truss it's just phenomenal. Um, and then by contrast, uh, this is the uh, Yellow Delight. And yeah, it's a bigger plant, but uh, it's uh, nowhere near as uh, productive. Not, not yet, anyway. And then down here, we've got the Trumpuccino, and that's growing well as well. I'm very pleased with that. And you know, quite a lot of flower buds on this baby. So that's good. And if we sneak through here, we'll see I got my peppers in the ground uh, and I just popped some spring onions in, in between those. And there's my tomatoes. And when I planted these, they were actually down inside these halos. They were that small. And uh, look at them now, really shooting up. And you can probably just see the first flowers just forming on there. So what else? I've got another trumpuccino here. Yeah, I've just put these on the strings just a couple of days ago. And I shall, as soon as Debbie arrives, I'll be taking this trestle table and fleece out because obviously it's not needed now. Uh, and then that'll let me get the uh, strings in for the tomatoes. And then I'm very, very pleased with my strawberries. The, the ones in these pots have done fantastically. Uh, and I have got uh, 
a trailing blackberry in there. But I think next year, because these strawberries have done so well in these containers, I probably won't bother putting tomatoes in the containers. I'll just have this whole lot just be strawberries. Um, because yeah, I'm really, really pleased with them. You can probably see that, like, just a fantastic harvest off them. And you know, I mean, harvesting these twice a day at the moment is just mad. I've actually got some tomatoes as well. Not, not many, but um, this is a tumbling tom. I'm not sure whether it's a tumbling tom yellow or a tumbling tom red, but uh, it's probably a yellow because I found that the early stuff, uh, tomatoes, the yellows do much better than the reds. So yeah, just gotta make sure, keep it watered. That's the only problem with these. And what else? I've got some more cucumbers down there. Last of my potatoes. Um, and I've actually transitioned uh, over to my outdoor potatoes now, but I've just got that one last one there to harvest. And yeah, look at my one of beans. Very pleased with this. I should really be outside now, this one of bean, but um, you know, this is a great example of the way that I like to manage my polytunnel. I really like to have a lot of stuff um, indoors, start it indoors and then start in pot and then move it outdoor um, when, the, uh, when the time is right. And the time is right for this to move outside, but we have got some gales coming, um, or high winds anyway, next week. So I'll probably leave it in for another week. I got my first courgettes coming on nicely. Um, I've probably got something eating that one, look, but uh, yeah, I'll have to sort out what's going on there. But yeah, some nice courgettes, quite pleased with those. And then I've got another massive <laughs> tumbling tom in that pot there. I don't think I've got any tomatoes on there. And then I've just got lots of odds and sods on this bench. Some nice beetroot coming on there. I've noticed though that the tomato, the tomatoes, the strawberries that are growing in these pots are nowhere near as good as the ones that are up on here. So I'm gonna concentrate on those next year. They just seem to like it higher up uh, where they're getting more light and more heat. Uh, a lot of these strawberries in the pots were actually down on the floor. There's much more shade down there. And what else set in here? Oh, just some lovely cauliflowers. Yeah, really, really gorgeous. Look at those. Perfect. And I suppose what I should show you also is just my uh, sweet corn. That's growing on really nicely. Very pleased with that. And I've got quite a few tubs of sweet corn in here. Um, and some of those will be going home very soon. Uh, they'll sit on the patio. So I think that's enough for this uh, polytunnel. So here's a quick overview of the site. I've got my compost in down here. I've got most of my water storage here, or half of my water storage here and half at the other end. I've got my Second succession of cabbages here. Uh, I've got some of the pointy types, I can't remember which variety there, and I've got some mini savoys there. Cauliflowers there, and broccolinis down towards the end. And then all my raspberries, gooseberries all around the back. This is my biggest bed of carrots down here. And that's all doing pretty well in there. And all my coal frames and things, we'll have a look around those in a minute. And some peas down here. And that's pretty much it. So let's look at the details. Okay, so I've got about three or four hundred carrots in here. And I've just th thinned those out. Um, and I've got the nets on. And I also watered them in nematodes just before I put the nets on. So hopefully I'll uh, keep that safe from the carrot fly. I'm really pleased with me, mini savoys. They're coming on really nicely. 
We've harvested loads of um, cauliflowers so far. I think we've got about five cauliflowers, but I have got one, unfortunately. Not everything's perfect. It's um, starting to split a little bit. But what we tend to do with those is we just treat them a bit like purple sprouting broccoli, and they're just fine. So we break them up into uh, little clumps. Yeah, so they're going well. Uh, we've got some more calabrese out of here. Anybody who follows me knows that we've been eating calabrese now since about January time. And this is the uh, broccolini and it just throws up hundreds and hundreds of these little, I don't know if you can see them really on this video, but of these little um, florets. They don't look much at the moment, but uh, once these plants get going, they're really prolific. Uh, summer raspberries are doing well. Won't be long. Autumn fruiters are all growing strong. Gooseberries, I'm so pleased with the gooseberries this year. We had some problems with the uh, grey mould on the gooseberries uh, last year. And we still had a little bit of an issue uh, this year as well, but we've pulled up, pulled up off the ones that were affected. And uh, yeah, these are looking pretty good. I gave these a good prune as well last year. So yeah, I won't show off with any more of my gooseberries, but yeah, really good. And then this is, was my uh, early uh, kale bed and it worked fantastically. So we had a really good succession of kale so as, as all the uh, overwintered stuff finished, uh, this was all more than ready. Um, and so we've just had fantastic kales. Um, obviously this is a Carvalho Nero. Um, this is Dazzling Blue. And this is one of the dangers though, of doing things really early, is uh, it's already going to seed. Um, and of course that's not an issue at all because we've got loads of um, spring planted kale as well um, you know the, we knew that when we planted this bed that uh, it would be a short-lived bed it would just see us uh, through to uh, summer I've got some more dazzling blue here this was planted a little bit later it's beautiful though isn't it such colouring and very soon this charred bed will be out um, I'm leaving it as long as I can though because I'm not desperate for the space and I'm using all of these seed heads in the smoothie mixes and they work really nicely like that so then here we've got the first of the main crop um, of the boltardy beetroot and i'm pretty pleased with the way that that's growing on so that's not far behind the stuff that's in the uh, polytunnel and so i'm pleased i didn't plant too much more in the polytunnel because it's only going to really fe feed us for a couple of weeks before this bed takes over and then of course we've got lots of successions of uh, beetroot still to come. I think this is the last of my overwintered veg um, and it really needs to come out now but it's been such an amazing harvest for me uh, feeding us all from October all the way through to, to now still um, but the quality of these hearts isn't that great now so uh, yeah, I think I'll be clearing that bed and getting it replanted. Uh, I've got some lovely hearts of uh, Navarra lettuce here as well. And I don't normally let things heart up. I normally prefer to uh, just t keep taking the outer leaves. But um, yeah, the, the quality of these hearts are just so gorgeous. And then I've got some lovely um, stew on onions and these were really originally planted as spring onions but I've got so many spring onions that I've just left some of these to uh, bulb up and that's the beauty of using stew on as your spring onions um, early in the season you know if you get, if you plant too many you just get bulbing onions that uh, you can keep and at the back there there's some leeks I don't know if you can see them but uh, yeah they're, they're pretty nice now and uh, I'll probably end up transplanting those into uh, Jenny's plot and I shall get some really nice uh, early leeks from those. And then this is the last of my Carvalho Nero early kale and this was planted pretty much the same time as the stuff you've just seen 
Um, yeah, it's beautiful stuff. So I just planted this bed yesterday, so it's not looking so good. But I've got turnip greens down there, and those have already been grown primarily for the smoothie mixes. Uh, it's a really nice to have a mix of leaves for smoothies. I try to try and get about at least eight different types of leaves uh, in each smoothie mix. Um, so what have I got here? I've got some more spring onions and then my next charred bed. And obviously it's not looking great because it's only just been planted. But um, yeah, it's, it'll pick up, it'll be fine. Next time we do a tour, this should be looking really nice and healthy. And I've got two beds uh, under these hoop tunnels of little peppers. <laughs> and they really were sickly little plants uh, in the greenhouse. Um, so I decided I'd get them in the ground as quickly as possible. And well, they're coming on, but they're not. <laughs> nothing to be proud of at this stage. Let's just hope. And a golden beetroot bed with alderman peas behind. And a salad bed interplanted with spring onions, uh, a lot of which have been picked. Um, and this is bijou, it's a gorgeous uh, red lettuce. Um, and this is moon red. Um, and this is like a little gem, but obviously it's a red little gem. And it hearts up beautifully. So I've got quite a, fit, quite a bit of that. I do love to have a mix of these loose leaf, uh, oak leaf type lettuces. Um, and the uh, hearting, crunchy hearts. But I'll just bring you back to these. These don't look healthy. They never have looked healthy. And I'm not really sure. The sort of crinkly leaves, um, just not what I'm not expecting from uh, a golden beetroot. I don't know whether it's just a different variety, but they just don't look right to me. But anyway, I'll leave them because we love golden beetroot and this is my most advanced bed and they do seem to be growing. So fingers crossed, they'll be okay. Currently my main salad bed and uh, yeah, absolutely fabulous. It doesn't matter how much I pick it, <laughs> it always seems to be ready to be picked again. These are some of my favourite uh, summer crops. This is golden purslane. Um, this is New Zealand spinach with a few spring onions left in there and it's interesting that these these two beds um, were just planted a couple of days ago um, from the same batch of seedlings as uh, one that I planted about a week and a half ago but that was under a cold frame and I'll show you the difference in growth rates it just shows you how getting things in the ground really does accelerate growth providing can provide good growing conditions. So here's that same batch of golden purslane in uh, under a coal frame and that same batch of New Zealand spinach and that is not far off ready for harvest. <laughs> Fantastic. And there's another lettuce bed surrounded by uh, radish <laughs> and quite a lot of mare's tail, need to get to that. And then this is the, well, not particularly impressive uh, bed of spinach. Uh, most of this now is really only fit for the smoothie mixes. Not to fear, I have this gorgeous uh, Amazon spinach, which is where we're taking most of our spinach for uh, cooking and salads at the moment. Really gorgeous, very happy with that. And then next to that are oh, some more salads and what a gorgeous bed of spring onions. Another bed of these very sickly looking little pepper plants. And they're really just spares that I've got left over. But I am trying to find out whether there's something that I can usefully grow underneath these hoop tunnels. Obviously the hoop tunnels are fantastic all the way through you know, early spring uh, and then you know, late autumn and winter. But 
I could move them into a storage area, but if I could find something that would grow well under them, uh, that would be great, just less hassle uh, to move them. So I'm hoping that for most of their lives, until they outgrow it, I'll actually be able to grow peppers under here, but it's a bit of an experiment. So my asparagus is almost finished now, and uh, I might take one more harvest off here, but then I'll leave it to grow on because it's only in its third year, so I don't want to be picking it too, too long. But I was pleased to see I've actually got some quite a lot of self-seeded asparagus on here. Um, so yeah, I might end up leaving a few of these in because uh, we've got no asparagus plants down the centre of this bed, so that's where most of the seedlings are. So that's pretty good. So this morning I just planted this bed of resistor fly carrots and in my experience is that they're not particularly resistant to a uh, carrot fly but um, I do water with nematodes uh, and so you know that uh, helps a little bit as well again it, even the nematodes there's nothing you can do to completely eradicate the carrot fly unless you're using covers uh, or growing them really high up um, but we'll see it'll be good enough and then this is a bed, this will be the last bed of spinach that I've planted. Um, and this is red kitten, which apparently is resistant to bolting. And it is nice to have some true spinach as well as the New Zealand spinach. Um, but anyway, this will be the last batch that will be planted until August time. And then this is one of my other uh, very early brassica beds. And these are my little clumps of sprout plants. Three sprout plants to a clump grown just for the leaves. We probably will get some bonus sprouts, probably sometime in June, July time. Um, but they won't be tight sprouts, they'll be blown sprouts. And I just particularly love bones, blown sprouts. So uh, that'll be a bonus. But primarily we grow them for the leaves, which are super healthy and super tasty and so tender at this time of year. Really lovely. And then we've got another uh, salad bed. You know, right now I've actually got too much salad, can't keep up with it. But of course, last month we had just the right amount, and that's the nature of gardening, really. It's all about uh, managing your surpluses, really, as much as anything else. And then we'll just take a look at the early peas. So these peas were um, Duce Provence. I know a lovely little pea. I can't. Uh, can't complain too much. They're not the sweetest pea I've ever tasted, but yeah, they're really nice and they're really nice little snack food. Um, these were grown initially for the first couple of months in the polytunnel and then they moved outside and they're much happier outside now. But yeah, it's a really good crop of those. And then these are really lovely uh, moish too and these are Oregon sugar pod and what a prolific uh, crop this is absolutely fantastic we're just picking handfuls and handfuls of these every day um, yeah can't keep up with them and there's only a very small number of plants and there's probably about 12 plants in there um, and that's all you need I'll show you just how I planted these them. were planted sometime in early February um, and they were grown on in the polytunnel and then about March time they were planted just at the back of this coal frame I don't know if you can see this is a coal frame and then they grew on there until I took the coal frame lid off in April time and then they just shot up this little support structure that I've got there for them um, so it's a great way of getting early peas you uh, you know just grow them at the back of the coal frames and they don't actually get in the way of the stuff at the front of the coal frame which in this case is um, one of my early kale crops. And we've got some reflex curly kale there, some dazzling blue kind of in the Cavalo Nero camp, some red Russian, which is really lovely, and uh, some more uh, reflex curly kale there. And I've got some spring cabbages, which will end up being summer cabbages, but I was hoping that there would be spring cabbages and then some more cauliflowers so that's pretty good and then here we've got some more of the juice provence 
uh, peas. And now a little bit further behind. And in here, this was my, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, this was the main spring onion bed. And now it's got calabrese, four calabrese around the edge. And then in the centre there is another one of the dazzling blue kales. And then at the back, uh, alderman peas. And then in this bed, salads. And then these are graffiti cauliflowers. And another dazzling blue kale in the middle. And then this was meant to be my early uh, carrot bed. But uh, I planted these in February and they were growing so well. But now they're all starting to run to seed, which is really annoying. Can you see? Starting to thicken up. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure whether I'm going to get many decent carrots out of here, which would be a real shame. Let's just put one up and have a look. Mm, that one might be all right. I'll try that in a minute. Mm, actually, that was gorgeous. I'll still eat it. But they, these aren't the carrots we're eating at the moment. We're eating uh, these over here. These in January, these are in these containers on the top of my compost bin. I'm still eating this carrot, it's lovely. Um, yeah, and yeah, they've grown really nicely. Very pleased. Moved them outside about a month ago. And uh, there's, about, there's enough here for us for about six weeks. So by then we should have uh, an abundance of carrots. I don't think I have ever seen this many pears on a tree. I'm going to Obviously, we're going to get loads of these dropping in June, but uh, probably have to pull a lot of them off, which is a shame. It's a tiny little tree. So many pears. But anyway, what I'm really here for is to show the ochre. We had a terrible crop of ochre last year. It was all my fault. But I managed to get five viable tubers. So I planted these in these pots. And ochre is something that does well in pots because um, most of the growing of the tubers occurs really late in the season, so in November time, you know, October, November time. So these can be brought inside and if you can keep them going until, say, December, you're going to get much more, many more tubers. And I'm hoping this gives me a really good stock, probably not enough to eat, but certainly enough to... Uh, get a good stock to plant next year. So that's my plot done. We're going to take a walk down to uh, Debbie's plot now. But before I go, I'll just show you my little, to walk back a bit, my little flower border, which is just looking so lovely at the moment. I've got a cherry tree here. I've got a pear tree here. And it's got all these fantastic sebums growing in these planting pockets. I've got a plum tree here. Some more of these amazing. And then an apple tree here. You can see really with the sun. Pretty good crop of apples on there. Another apple tree here. And there's a couple of perennial kales planted. And uh, yeah, doing quite nicely. Not exactly sure what this purple tinge is, but anyway, plant's good. So, heading down to Debbie's plot. Debbie's just finished clearing all of her overwintered brassicas as well. So she's doing a lot of herbs this year. Uh, so there's already that magnificent herb bed there. And then she's just put in all of these little herbs on this bed so basically the herb bed is gradually expanding down here and this will all be uh, out soon this is just rocket solid rocket which has all gone to seed and there's some broad beans down here as well strawberries and garlic And then another lovely herb bed interplanted with garlic. 
and I'm not sure, we've cleared some of these beds, I'm not sure exactly what's going in, but we've got some shallots over there and some New Zealand spinach there. And then we've got down the back there, some more broad beans and they'll be out soon and they'll be replaced by the um, claret purple sprout in broccoli. And then we've got a pretty staggering <laughs> harvest of currants which I don't like but uh, Debbie really likes uh, if I can get out of the sun unbelievable and Debbie's got a fantastic number of pears as well it's definitely the season for pears these are Williams mine were conference and it has a lot of berries this year as well you saw all the, the uh, raspberries and strawberries on my plot but there's a fantastic crop of blackberries on uh, Debbie's plot and she's also got loganberries and tayberries and she's got goji berries and gooseberries look at that goji berry it's absolutely huge and cherries you can see that that uh, beautifully trained cherry tree there and then another her bed there and then we're gonna have loads of sweet corn on here and those a little bed of uh, sun chokes there that's growing very nicely it's gonna be huge when it's finished so now we just arrived on Jenny's plot and this is the plot that's seen the biggest transformation this was down here where the uh, brassicas are now that was all field beans over there that was all overwintered brassicas so it's really changed so on this bean frame this is where the french beans are going to go and these have been planted in the ground no sign of them yet but i did have a little fumble around and uh, yeah, they're definitely on their way up and i've got just between these two canes here and here uh, these are amethyst purple dwarf French beans and then these tiny little plants can you see them those are going to grow into quite big bushes of Aztec broccoli and I've got some more of those just in pots as well just in case uh, we have some bad weather when we lose those and then the rest of this area that's just soil at the moment that's where all the summer planted uh, broccolis are going to go uh, the early purple and the claret and then there there's all the brassicas let's have a peek so there's a lovely mixture in here there's some kales at the front and then there's sprouts and collets and cabbages all the way down there they're all growing nicely all the apple trees seem to be doing well in fact all the trees are doing well apart from this plum very little evidence of anything on this plum but again crazy amounts of pears and we've got the elephant garlic here again interplanted with strawberries and we have actually had a few strawberries off this bed and then this is one of the main main crop onion beds and these are stir on here these are uh, lila there and then there's some shallots down the other end there and some calcots down there and yet more strawberries of which we've had quite a few this one there almost ready and then this is the overwintered onion bed and as you can see there's quite a few of the red ones going to seed now but that's no surprise really but uh, yeah, a decent size on them I'm quite pleased with them more garlic I'll be very pleased to get this bed emptied and replanted now and then we've got these two broad bean beds which are absolutely dripping 
with broad beans. This bed's just a little bit behind this bed. But yeah, I just, it's so many broad beans, it's unbelievable. And then these are the squash plants that got scorched. So you can see quite a bad scorching on there from where the, uh, the leaf was touching the fleece on a hot day, but a cold night. Um, but plant seems to be healthy enough, so I'm not too worried. Uh, and most of these are crown prints. So I think there's 12 or 13 crown prints in here. Um, and then some butternut squash down the center. Um, and these were sickly plants when I put them in and they're sickly plants now. But uh, it doesn't matter too much because I've got loads of spare crown prints and we actually prefer the crown prints anyway. And then I think finally just a frame of runner beans. And I did have a few plants. As you've seen the runner beans that I've got in the polytunnel. So that's my first crop. And then this is the second succession. And then we've got the rest in the ground. So I'm just tidying up now. Just smooth these two um, hoop tunnels off the plot. They were over there. One was over there, over that kale. And the other one was here, over these carrots and red kitten spinach. And I do love it when I get rid of the plastic on the plot. And it won't be long before uh, that lid's gone as well. Fantastic. And so this is the last job of the day. This is the carrot bed that I just planted. And I just popped a bit of shade cloth over it. And that keeps it nice and moist because carrot germination, the key really, is mm -hmm. to keep the bed nice and moist. And in this sort of weather, you'll find that you'll water it and then half an hour later it's dry again. Um, with that shade cloth, you only need to water it um, probably every other day. And uh, yeah, it keeps nice and moist underneath there. Makes a world of difference. Take it off in about maybe 10 days time, something like that. And hopefully there'll be baby carrots. I hope you enjoyed that video. And so that's everything that's happened in May. I'm uh, really excited for June. Start thinking about winter. <laughs> I know it seems strange, doesn't it? But if you don't start thinking about winter in June, then uh, you know, you're not going to be self-sufficient through winter. So that's done. I'm going to sit in this polytunnel now, edit the video, and I'm going to eat my breakfast. What a lovely little snack. Mm -hmm.